One May Day an elderly man of small stature appeared at a shooting gallery in Moscow. He ordered a target and 13 cartridges for his rifle. When the first three bullets went sideways, the young people practicing shooting here said, Grandpa, you've already shot yours. But having adjusted to the weapon, he sent all the next 10 bullets exactly into the target. When the target was removed, it was marked with nine tens and one nine. As a sign of respect, the owner of the shooting range returned the money paid for the shooting and asked him to leave a unique target with the visitor's autograph in the institution as a souvenir. This shooter was a pensioner from the city of Brest, retired Colonel Ivan Tarantievich Kachev. He came to Moscow to meet his fellow soldiers, veterans of World War II. In those years of the war he was a sniper, and on his personal account there were 169 officially killed German soldiers and officers, each of which was marked in his personal sniper's book. But on the account of his friend hero of the Soviet Union Mikhail Budenkov killed more than 400 enemies. It was with him that Ivan Tkachev entered the shooting gallery. But then his comrade in arms didn't shoot because he didn't have his glasses with him, or he would have remembered his youth. After all, if Tkachev in his twenties destroyed almost 200 enemies and was considered a recognized ace in the war, Budenkov with a personal index of several hundred killed enemies was a super pro. Misha Budenkov was really a sniper from God in the war, a hereditary Siberian with excellent hunting skills, excellent health and a young sharp eye. He had been fighting since June 22, 1941. Retreating from Brest he fought his way to Moscow. In August, 1942, after recovery in hospital, he was sent to the post of commander of a mortar detachment. In his spare time he was engaged in sniper hunting. It was the experience of such people during the war years that helped the professional formation of the Soviet Army Sniper School. Kachev himself came to snipers from a different environment. While still at school, he became interested in the movement of Varashilev shooters. He became the best. At the very beginning of the war he went to the front and served in reconnaissance. One day he killed a German with a rifle from 800 meters, who was walking brazenly along the front line. Then he was told to be a sniper. But the ability to shoot accurately for people of this military profession is only half a job. The ability to choose a position, to camouflage, to wait and think, to constantly improve these are the factors that played a major role in deciding the sniper's question to be or not to be alive today. Ivan Tkachev learned these lessons well, because he was among the few who survived. The veteran recalled that in about 1943 a squad of 50 girls who had completed sniper courses arrived to their unit. At the front range they showed excellent results, which were unattainable even for former frontline soldiers. But in real conditions of sniper confrontation the sharp eye of many was not saved. Ivan Tarantievich kept a photo of Masha Aksanova, a pretty girl from Siberia, who was seriously wounded after a German sniper got into the sight of her rifle. She survived. Ivan Tarantievich himself was hit by enemy bullets exactly ten times, and he always got only scratches, because when he pulled the trigger, he immediately, in a split second, ducked his head under the sight. In the hunt of experienced snipers against each other, everything was decided by moments, and one of them was sure not to return to his own. That's how the aces fought. And novice hunters died more often and more prosaic, sometimes simply falling asleep in a combat position or giving themselves away by overzealousness in pursuit of insignificant and easy victims. Such snipers for an hour, or rather for one day, became especially numerous after the Battle of Stalingrad, during which sniper forces proved their effectiveness on both sides. It seemed to individual commanders at the time that any infantryman armed with a rifle with a telescopic sight could become a sniper. The brutal logic of war proved that this was not the case. As much as snipers were cherished by their own, so fiercely hated and sought to destroy others. The Germans in this respect had one important advantage. Size sights on German rifles could be easily dropped, and a captured Nazi sniper could pretend to be an ordinary soldier, and thus save his life. The sights on Russian rifles were fixed firmly. A fighter captured with such weapons had no chance to stay alive. 
snipers were not taken prisoner. Fortunately, Ivan Tkachev was saved from such a situation. In 1944, going out for another hunt, he found himself under heavy artillery fire from advancing German units. Concussed, he was pulled out of the battlefield by medical officer Ilya Fedotov, whose name he remembered for the rest of his life. After hospitalization, he wanted to take up a sniper rifle again and return to his company. But he was intercepted by the artillery command of his own unit and made the commander of the anti-tank gun crew. So until the end of the war, which for him ended in the Baltics, Ivan Tkachev sniped at Nazi tanks. Also, a successful shot was not always recorded in the sniper's book, which the shooter carried with him. It had to be documented by an observer, always accompanying the sniper, and by the company commander in whose location he was operating. For example, on December 11, 1943, the army newspaper wrote about how during the day the senior sergeant killed 28 Germans during the battle. But they were not included in the official personal record of the sergeant. Ivan told me that the battle was very hot. At the beginning by order of the company commander I destroyed two machine gun units, then together with the infantry I went into the attack, I was aiming fire at the retreating enemy. In short, I acted as an ordinary fighter, of course, using the advantages of my weapon. Another thing is when a sniper goes hunting covertly. Here the sniper's book is a must. Sometimes you can sit in a shelter for a whole day without seeing a single German officer, then you are satisfied with an ordinary soldier and make an appropriate mark, without which it was a shame to return. For one such day, spent in the fall of 1943, Ivan Tkachev had to report almost ten years later. Together with his partner from a safe shelter they killed three German officers and four soldiers at the entrance to the dugout. And one more German, very young, whose frightened eyes were clearly visible in the telescopic sight, the sniper took pity and did not pull the trigger. When he returned to the battalion, he told the commander that he had not killed the German because he was afraid to expose himself with an extra shot. And in 1952 I recognized this German in one of the guides during the GDR exhibition in Moscow. I came up, remembered this case, in turn, the guide confirmed that as part of the 122nd Infantry Division participated in the fall of 1943 in the battles near this city. One day snipers were shooting at the position where he was hospitalized. The German guide and Ivan Tkachev parted without exchanging addresses. He only told the German that he was a teacher at a prestigious educational institution. A few months later he was summoned to the police. It turned out that he had received a photograph and a letter from the German's wife and children thanking Tkachev for having spared their father. Tkachev was invited to visit Germany. The sergeant got acquainted with the letter already in the office of the counterintelligence investigator. Instead of a trip to the West Ivan Tkachev faced a long journey to Siberia. Anxious days and nights dragged on. Time was harsh then, there was a cold war. And if not for the front commanders who confirmed Ivan's sniper pass, the fate of the former brave sniper would have turned abruptly. And the face of a German soldier in the sniper's scope sometimes dreamed Ivan Tarantievich until the end of his days. Ivan Tkachev died on December 1st, 2016 in Brest.